I am Sir Radhika Singhal. So, in the last sessions, we were discussing regarding the capital budgeting decisions that are taken by comparing the outflows and the inflows, and the project, or you can say the proposal, which is the best, is chosen. Now, practically, this is not the scenario. Generally, organization do have a project, or you can say do have a budget for all the capital expenditures and a decision has to be taken considering the budget as a ceiling limit so what happens is that all the projects which are available or which are more beneficial to the organization are not opted off generally the a smaller investment project is taking considering the ceiling limit into consideration so what happened that in order to utilize the full ceiling limit other than the most profitable project those projects which are beneficial but do not the most profitable one are chosen up so this process is called as capital rationing which is generally done when there is a shortage of funds and the selection has to be done by or you can say that a project mix has to be taken in the circumstances of scarcity or shortage of the funds so this is not only in the case of budget ceiling practically the organization do not have the funds in unlimited they have some scarcity of funds and the funds have to be utilized accordingly so in capital rationing in order to select proper project mix a pi technique is used however there are certain preconditions for going for capital rationing like that the funds which are available for the investment today are in shortage you do not have unlimited funds second thing that there are more than one financially viable projects which are there for consideration by the company so that the could a project mix could be prepared and third all the projects which are there they are not mutually exclusive so it's not like that the two financial viable that is applied to you you can go only for one and they could be divided so they are they could be accepted in part also for using this pi technique to rank those projects there are two conditions which has to be fulfilled and both the condition has to be fulfilled if one condition is not fulfilled pi technique could not be used for ranking the two conditions are that the capital outflow is at zero period and the next condition is whatever projects that are there in the option they are infinitely divisible that is they can be accepted in parts but what if this condition not there like if the capital outflow is not at zero period infinitely divisible condition would be there but what if the first condition is not met in such scenario we cannot use the pi technique for capital rationing in such case npv index has to be computed and npv index is net present value divided by the initial cash outflow and after computing the npv index ranking could be done let's discuss this with the help of an example the present value cash inflow for project x and y is 2 lakh and 1 lakh 50 and the initial cash outflow in project x is 1 lakh and in y is 1000 the present value of cash outflow in x is 1 lakh and in y is 90000 so in x the condition has been met that the outflow as at the zero period but in y the outflow is not at the zero period so we cannot use the pi technique to rank the project we have to determine the most profitable project mix if the funds available for investment are rupees 1 lakh today so this 1 lakh today is the funds available for initial cash outflow given both the projects are infinitely divisible so the second condition has been met but the first condition is not meeting so we have to use npv index and not the pi technique so if we compute the npv project x has a npv of 1 lakh rupees pvcl as pvco and project y has an npv of 60000 so if we rank basis npv project x could be ranked as 1 and project y could be ranked as 2 if we use the pi technique which is pvci by pvco project x could be ranked as 2 and project y could be ranked as 1 but we are not going to use either of the techniques because 
the capital outflow is not our zero period. So we have to compute PVI NPV index, which is so NPV is one lakh in project X divided by the initial capital outflow, which is one lakh rupees. So one in case of project X and sixty in case of project Y. So if we rank now, project Y can be considered as rank one and project X can be considered as project rank two. So basis this ranking. If we allocate the funds, we can allocate thousand rupees for the initial cash outflow in project X. The balance ninety nine thousand could be invested in project X. So why we are going to invest thousand? Balance ninety nine thousand left. So we can ninety nine percent accept project X. So in Y, if we compute the NPV is sixty thousand rupees, one lakh less forty thousand, and in project X. What is the NPV if you accept it 100%? So we have to multiply that NPV by 99%, and we will get the NPV for the proportionate acceptance. So the total NPV for accepting project Y fully and 99% of project X is 1 lakh 59 thousand, and this is the highest NPV that you can use. If you go for any other project mix, the NPV would be less. This is how capital ashing is done. The other type of situations that an organization faces are like lease or buy proposals. So this is also mutually exclusive decision. So in lease or buy option, what is the capital outflow in lease? The lease rent amount, but there is a saving on tax on lease rent amount. So the net capital outflow would be payment of lease rent less the tax saving on lease rent. However, if the company go for buy option. If the funds are available, it's directly the buying cost. So the cost of asset is the capital outflow, less the tax saving of the depreciation, and less the terminal value of that asset. If the funds are not available and the company borrow funds for financing that asset, then the capital outflow will instead of the cost of asset will include the payment of the principal amount plus the interest amount, net of tax. So principal amount is not tax saving, and interest amount is tax saving. So if you take installment amount and then reduce it by tax, that will not resolve your purpose, because principal is a non-tax saving expense. Only interest is there, which is net of tax. Right? Let's do an example. The Olson company decided to acquire a new truck. One alternative is to lease a truck on four years contract for lease payment of rupees one lakh twenty thousand per year. With payment to be made at the beginning of each year. Note that that the payment is made at the beginning of each year. So the four year it will be payment made at zero year, first year, second year, and third year. The lease would include maintenance. So no need to maybe have the maintenance cost. Alternatively, Olson could purchase the truck outright at rupees four lakh. Olson would have to maintain the truck at a cost of ten thousand per year. So if it is taken on lease, there is no maintenance cost. But if you buy that lease, if you buy that truck, you have to bear a maintenance cost of ten thousand per year. Depreciation at hundred percent is allowed in the first year. The cash salvage value, which is the scrap value, is one lakh rupees. The tax rate is fifty percent, both for the operational and the capital profit gain. And the cost of capital is fifteen percent. So cost of capital is used for the borrowing cost. Advise also. So we have to compute the outflow in both the scenarios, and whichever lease or buy option, the present value of cash outflow is less. We will go for that option. So if we compute the present value of cash outflow for lease option, what is the lease rent? One lakh twenty thousand, which is to be paid at the beginning of the year, less the tax saving. Now, if you pay any amount at the beginning of the year, when you will save the tax at the end of the year. So though you are making an advance payment at the beginning at the zero period, but you will save tax on it at the end. So at the end of zero period means at the beginning of first year. So the time period for lease rent will be zero to three for four years, and saving will be one to four years. And accordingly, we will take the present value factor, right? So the PVCO for lease option is two lakh twenty two thousand six hundred. Now let's take the buy option. In buy option, the cost of truck, so investment is made at the 
zero period assumption of DCF technique. So four lakh rupees is the present value. You have to add the maintenance cost for all the four years, which is ten thousand per year net of tax. So fifty percent of tax amount. So five thousand is the actual hit. So for the four years, it will be fourteen thousand two hundred and seventy five. Less the tax saving on depreciation. So four lakh is the truck cost less one lakh, which is the salvage value divided by four, and then multiply by fifty percent. So you will save two lakh rupees. Since you can take the depreciation in the first year itself, you will take the whole salvage value. So two lakh for the first year will give you one lakh seventy four thousand, and the terminal value, which is one lakh rupees, less fifty thousand. Which is the capital gain on selling of the truck, which is to be realized at the end of fourth year. So the present value will be twenty eight thousand six hundred. So the net cash outflow in buy option would be two lakh eleven thousand six hundred and seventy five. You have to compare both the options, and the outflow in buy option is less than the outflow in lease option. So what will we suggest, Olson, to go for buy option? The next type of problems, but before that, discussing that, what you noted here, that in case of advance lease rent, though you are making the payment at the beginning of each year, the tax saving will start from the end of that year, right? So other problems that are there in DCF is while fixing the selling price. So if you have to compute the selling price, you will compute the minimum selling price, and that will be. Where the present value of cash inflow is equal to the present value of cash outflow. So to compute the selling price, we will assume that the selling price will be x. So if there is an example that T Limited has specialized in the manufacture of a particular type of telephones. Recently, it has developed a new model and is confident of selling 8,000 units. The required capital equipment would cost rupees 25 lakhs and would have an economic life of four years. With no significant salvage value at the end of such period. During the first four years, the promotional expenses are expected to be 1.5 lakh per annum. The variable cost would be 250 per annum per unit, and the additional fixed operating cost budgeted at 75,000. So you have to compute if the tax rate is 40% and the company use straight line method of depreciation. The management they what they expecting a discount rate at 15% after tax. Got it. So, what is the present value of cash outflow? The capital cost of the selling machine, which is twenty five lakhs. So twenty five lakhs to be invested at zero period. Plus, what are the expenses are there? Two lakh twenty five thousand, which is one lakh fifty on the advertisement expense, promotional expense. Plus seventy five thousand, so two lakh fifty thousand additional expense, which is to be incurred. This expense plus the variable cost, which is two fifty rupees for every unit, so eight thousand into two fifty plus one lakh fifty plus seventy five. So this is to be invested every year. So one to four year, what is the total amount? Thirteen lakh thirty five thousand net of tax. So this is the sixty percent of the total amount after deducing the forty percent tax lab. The total cash outflow will be sixty-five lakh fifteen thousand five hundred and forty-seven rupees. Now let's compute the inflows. So for inflows, you do not have the selling price. Let that to be x. So you are selling eight thousand unit for x rupees, and how much you will actually realize net of tax value? So less forty percent, which will give you forty-eight hundred x. This forty-eight hundred x will be realized from first to fourth year. So the cumulative PVF will be three point zero zero seven nine. So the present value will be fourteen thousand four hundred thirty eight x. Plus, since you've invested into that, there is a depreciation cost on which you will save tax. So twenty five lakhs is the overall cost with no salvage value, less zero divided by four, the life of the asset. The tax rate is forty percent, so that will be multiplied by forty percent. So every year you will save two lakh fifty thousand. Multiply by cumulative PVF, which is three point zero zero seven nine. 
which is equal to seven lakh fifty one thousand nine hundred and seventy five. Clear to there? So the minimum selling price will be at a scenario where we will actually recover the outflow amount. So the PVCI is equal to PVCO. So if you equate both these situation, which is seven lakh fifty one thousand nine hundred seventy five. Plus fourteen thousand four hundred thirty-eight x is equal to sixty-five lakh fifteen thousand five hundred forty-seven. You'll get that the selling price or x is equal to three ninety-nine point two. So this is the minimum selling price at which the NPV would be zero. If the selling price is below it, you will incur loss. If the selling price is above it, you will earn profit. So this is how the DCS problems are taken. That's all for today. We will. Take the other examples, IR technique which is left in the next class. Thank you. Have a nice day.